So Ethan, you know, um, you often say that it's important for patients to not confuse psychoactivity with efficacy, meaning some patients think that they need to get high for the cannabis medicine to work. And I hear this all the time from people, especially people who are new to cannabis medicine. They're like, I don't want to do cannabis medicine because I don't want to get high. Um, what do you tell people to explain to them the difference between the, the psychoactiveness of some cannabinoids versus the efficacy of them reducing the symptoms that they're looking to help with? Right. Well, they don't necessarily have to go together. Let's explain. Um, I am not going to say that euphoria is a bad thing. And a touch of euphoria can be great to a, a patient who's had a chronic disorder and finally has experienced some relief. Anybody's going to feel great or euphoric under those circumstances. But to the Food and Drug Administration, <laughs> euphoria is listed as a side effect. And again, many consumers, particularly cannabis naive people who might benefit from its use as a medicine, aren't looking to have any level of psychoactivity. They rather are seeking symptom relief. And um, it is the case and has been established that most often there's some sweet spot in using a properly constituted cannabis-based medicine wherein the patient has symptom control without adverse events, meaning without side effects, particularly of a psychoactive nature. And those would be anxiety, um, paranoia, things you don't want, as well as things like euphoria, which are not necessarily bad, but not necessary to get symptom control. So it's been amply demonstrated in randomized controlled trials of cannabis-based medicines uh, that you can achieve pain control or control of spasticity, muscle tightness and multiple sclerosis, bladder symptoms, any number of things without a, a concomitant level of intoxication. In other words, without being high or having other associated problems. Um, and for most people, this is going to be the goal. The problem with psychoactivity associated with cannabis is more often associated uh, with smoking mm -hmm. or with vaporization because this creates a peak of activity, both serum levels and brain levels, a quick peak, but also a quicker offset. And that's going to produce more problems. It means more frequent dosing, the greater chance of psychoactive side effects, a uh, greater chance of reinforcement. Reinforcement is the idea that drugs that are very short acting are more likely to get people hooked, mm -hmm. if you will. Now, I can tell you that in medical usage, the risk of dependency on cannabis is next to nothing. Uh, however, it remains a big concern for regulatory bodies. Uh, it's been shown that, for instance, the um, cannabis-based medicine Sativex has a very low drug abuse liability, in other words, uh, risk of dependency or other associated problems. Mm -hmm. um, so. You know, if we're setting aside that the, the, we want to have the THC in the medicine so that we can take advantage of the entourage effect. So we want to have some and, and we want to use the other minor cannabinoids and terpenes to essentially push these other buttons, if you will, in the human so that they can get the relief. Um, say, for example, the anti-inflammatory relief or that, you know, or, or working with their migraines or the irritable bowel syndrome <coughs> without folks necessarily feeling um, the psychoactivity of being high. How can an individual patient figure out how much THC to have in the mix so that they have enough for the entourage effect, but not enough that they experience the psychoactivity or euphoria sure. that they may not necessarily want? Well, everyone's different. Mm -hmm. So what a patient needs depends on their prior experience, whether they've used cannabis, cannabis before, whether they might have some degree of tolerance. Um, also something we can't easily measure, what we call their endocannabinoid tone. That means how much endogenous cannabinoid do they have naturally in their system? What is the state of the receptors, their density and their activity level? We know that these are important, but we don't know <laughs> 
uh, how to measure those uh, easily yet. They're mm -hmm. still research techniques. We can issue some general guidelines on dosing. Um, two and a half milligrams of THC is a threshold dose uh, for most people. Some people will feel it, some will not. Five is a moderate dose. Almost everyone is going to feel unless they've developed tolerance. And 10 milligrams is going to be too much uh, for someone who's cannabis naive um, and should be about as much as anyone would need in a single dose. Uh, again, it makes a big difference, the route of delivery, uh, but that would be a general guideline. Um, in chronic usage, I like people to limit their total daily usage of THC to somewhere in the 15 to 20 milligram range, exceptionally 30 milligrams. Beyond that, we're talking about a greater likelihood of side effects and not, not a likelihood of increased efficacy. Um, but with those levels of THC, we might have a great deal more CBD um, necessary to treat certain conditions. Um, but those would be general guidelines. So you said that dosage is based, um, you know, a, a significant consideration is tolerance. And I absolutely know that there's folks who are watching who are taking, you know, 100 milligram THC edibles, right? Because say, for example, they're chronic pain patients or something, right? And it's the only thing that gets them through their day. So how do you kind of jive those two where, where we want to keep people below 30 milligrams a day, but with tolerance, we've got patients that are taking, you know, 100 grams at 100 milligrams at once. Right. But it's just because of that tolerance mm -hmm. that they can handle 100 milligrams. But it doesn't mean that that number is necessary to really gain symptom control. So maybe if they were to titrate down, well, they would be able to get the same relief for less money or whatever. Right. In fact, um, there is a technique that's been pioneered by Dustin Sulak, my colleague in Maine. Uh, he calls it resensitization procedure. He will have the patient is using what seems to be too much THC on a daily basis stop for 48 hours. It's not a week, it's not a month, two days of nothing, and then resume at half the prior dose of THC. And what he's seen is the level of symptom control at half the dose is just as good as it was at the prior full dose. So essentially, it's a, it's a, it's a short, intense tolerance break. Exactly. Hmm. So with that, you're, you'd be able to hopefully get the same benefits that you had been getting uh, out of a lot less milligrams. Exactly, and with less capital expenditure yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, totally. Preserve your patient garden. So if you want to hear more about, um, about uh, dosing suggestions, uh, uh, Dr. Russo uh, co-authored a paper that came out this year, and uh, the link to it is in the first comment. Thank you.